We are here at Oshkosh, Air EAA Air Venture Oshkosh 2021, and we are all delighted to be back. Looks like a pretty good group of people here. I think so. Amen. Yeah. So we're looking at an airplane. We've often seen the Hyperlight before. It's been around a long time. The Sorrell brothers from out west designed these, this airplane in a single place version of this many years ago. And then Ron got involved with it. When was that, first of all? Uh, we first got involved in uh, 2002. 2002. Okay, so you've been working at this for a while now. You're located in Michigan, I believe. Southeast Michigan. Southeast Michigan, okay. And uh, you have tackled this project now as a special light sport aircraft. So um, tell me a little bit about the project, and then we'll talk about the airplane itself. The last uh, few years, uh, we've been getting more and more inquiries as far as, you know, if and when we'll go light sport. Uh, initially, uh, I didn't really have much of an interest in it. We're getting more and more requests, so uh, we decided to kind of do a, a short study and, and do the homework, and it uh, looks like it, it's feasible for us to go ahead and continue and airplane. So as I understand the process, having talked to some other people about it, you go through the effort of that line-by-line -line thing, yes, we've right. done it, yes, we have that, yes, we've done that, mm -hmm. and then they come out and they'll look through all that, but they also want to see your practices of manufacturing. They want to see our facility. Things like mm -hmm. places that need a torque wrench, they want to know Place. you've calibrated your torque crunch and stuff like Correct. that right it's, it's pretty deep isn't it it is it's pretty pretty involved uh they want to take a look at the tooling the manufacturing process so the process of going through this now mm -hmm. uh it, it's it's got its challenges there's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. you have to do all those line items and the best practices and so forth mm -hmm. right. how how far are you through that process now a rough guess um probably uh maybe 30 percent of the way right now okay yeah we, we started the paperwork uh, when we get home from Oshkosh, we'll be starting the flight test program. I get serious about that. Okay, so you're that close then. You're ready to start close. flight testing. Right. Okay, which is part of the ASTM testing. Correct. You have to prove various things, mm -hmm. and you have to document it and take video and stuff yes. like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's no small task. No, but you think you can complete it by the end of the year? I, I think so. Let's talk about the airplane itself now. There's a two-seat version and there's a yes. single-seat version. This is obviously the two. Tell me about the construction material. Well, the construction has actually uh, been around for decades. It's uh, one piece, chrome molly, steel fuselage. Okay. Uh, the wings are all, all aluminum, D-cell wings. Tail feathers, all aluminum. Uh, standard uh, What's stits, the spar made out of? Uh, 6061 or 2024 aluminum. Tube? Uh, C channel. C channel, okay. C channel. All right. Stamped ribs, uh, aluminum leading edge. Uh, what kind of and ribs? What kind of material? Uh, the, the ribs are also uh, 2024. Okay, stamped so aluminum. aluminum ribs. Aluminum ribs, okay. aluminum spar, 100% aluminum in the wings. Okay. Uh, covering, uh, right now we're on the fence between going with Stitz and Ortex. Uh, both have their pros and cons. Uh, so, and, and uh, landing gear? Uh, 6150. Alloy steel landing gear. Okay, steel gear. Fixed, okay, steel gear, and control and linkages. How are the how are the controls linked? The rudder and tail wheel are, are cable. Uh, the ailerons and or elevator is push tube. Okay, push pull tube. The ailerons are also uh, mechanical push now, pull tubes. I'm going to take a peek down here, but you're just single aileron. Is that correct? Single aileron. Some by wings are, folks have have ailerons on both wings. Right, but frankly, they, they makes double them. as flaperons also. Oh, they do. Okay. When you come okay. full aft, well, yeah, on and the they're stick, full length as well. So you, when you come full aft on the stick. You get about 20 degrees of flat. Oh, okay. But you still have. Oh, all right. Yeah, pretty generous movement through. after yes. your full. So, uh, uh, so there's not a separate flap control. No, it's just all, aft on the stick. You got a, a mixer that the Sorrells came up with. That uh, that's it's a all, pretty fancy all, little mixer, I'm it guessing. Is. <laughs> it is, but, but very simple. Okay. Yeah. What engine are you going to use in this? We're going to use the Jabiru 2200. Now that's. We know the Jabiru 2200, 80 mm -hmm. horsepower, it's been around mm -hmm. for a long time. I think it's a great engine, mm -hmm. but it's not a common engine for other people besides Jabiru to pick. Why did you pick right. that engine? A uh, couple of reasons. Um, it's a four-stroke. More and more people are comfortable with a four-stroke. Uh, we were going to use the HKS, and they decided not to bring that in back into production. Yeah. Then yeah, we went to 582, bad, and we found out that's being discontinued. So uh, yeah, the Jabiru is a logical Jabiru's choice. Jabiru's looking pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's a fine yeah, engine. This is a four-cylinder, four-stroke. Four four-stroke. A little closer to the familiar GA experience. Right, and it's direct drive, so there's no gearbox to, to worry about. All right, let's talk a little bit about how she flies, Ron. Taxing, uh, unlike a lot of tail draggers, you got good visibility over the nose, yeah. so there's no need for oh, S-turns. This up and down the taxiway. This is deck angle for a lot of people, right. and it's not so steep. So that's how you can see forward. You can see Am I forward right? over the nose, so Continue no problem. 
Uh, so taxing is pretty straightforward. Uh, once you get on the runway and give a throttle, things happen kind of quick. Uh, you're going to roll about 20 yards and the tail is going to be up. Okay. And at about 15 to 18 miles an hour, it's wanting to fly. 15 to 18? 15 to 18, yeah. It's getting real light on the controls. you got a lot of wing here. How much wing area do you have? Uh, 148 square feet. Yeah, okay. That's the yeah. magic then. That's a lot of wing area yeah, for an airplane of this weight. The fuselage is also a lifting body that contributes to you know, a fair amount of lift. Yeah, so. again, I'm not sure the camera sees it here, but the whole fuselage has got a really nice shape to it going back to the tail that, uh, descri that you just described with the lifting yeah. body mm -hmm. comment. Yeah, and uh, at about uh, 45 miles an hour, then we rotate. And okay. climb out at 50. Uh, normal cruise with this airfoil and this engine is going to be somewhere between 90 and 95. Oh, okay. Miles an hour? Miles an hour. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. And your stall speed comes at about 37, 38 miles an hour. Um, flying is just, it's pretty straightforward. It's its a two-finger airplane, real light on the controls, real responsive, you know, without being scary. Okay. Uh, so it's real easy to fly. Roll and pitch? Roll and pitch. Real stable. No bad habits. And uh, landing is also pretty straightforward. Uh, it's one of the more docile tail draggers out there. I know tail draggers make some people nervous. A lot of people are nervous because they didn't have any experience like that. You know, right. you learn in a right. Cessna, Piper, whatever, you're never getting any tail dragger time. Right. Uh, this one, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, it'll either wheel land or three-point it or a lot of, I, I occasionally you know, I'll bring it in on the tail wheel and then let the mains drop when the speed bleeds off. Um, but no bad habit. All right, so um, talk to me about fuel economy with this engine. With what? this engine, about two and a half gallons an hour occurs. Uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to say a pretty low number. I wasn't quite yeah. prepared for that, but really. About half of what a two-stroke is wow. of, of comparable wow. horsepower. And how much fuel are you carrying? Uh, 15 gallons. Okay, so 15, 15 gallons. So normally people go, well, that's a little light, but not at, say, three gallons an hour. That's five hours. hours. Yeah. Or four hours of the whole hour of reserve. Uh, so with this engine and built and ready to fly you gave me a number i thought was pretty amazing well I, and not amazingly high <laughs> yeah um well without being overly optimistic at today's cost and conditions we're shooting for something in the the mid to high 60s 65,000. let's just put a number on it right you could be ready to fly airplane that's what we're hoping for with a four-stroke engine with a four-stroke engine 80 horse four-stroke engine gonna make right. this thing fly pretty good i think and yes what yes. kind of climb rate do you see with this engine uh with this engine easily 1500 feet a minute Whoa. <laughs> that's a that's a lot of good information i think that people would want to know about tell me how long the the two-place version of one kind or another has been flying just to give people some perspective uh, the, on how long it's been around the uh, two-place was introduced in uh 1984 Four, I believe. Okay, so that's uh, a long history. A single then. place, two years before that. Wow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, next year you got we're like forty up, years of experience. We're coming up on our fortieth anniversary. All right. Now, mm -hmm. as we discussed earlier, you're not the originator of the project. You have no. an idea how many are flying though, of all kinds of hyperlights uh, in whatever form. Since uh, it was first introduced, I'm guessing about six hundred and fifty single oh. places. Okay, that's quite a few. And uh, thirty-five to forty two places. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So that's quite a few. It's a long time of experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been at it for a while. The airplane's been around for a while. There are quite a few flying. All those things should give people a, yeah, I was interested, but I wasn't sure about some of that stuff. Well, right. come on and look further. Where yeah. can they find you on the web to inquire further? Ron? Our web address is uh, www.thunderbirdaviationmi, all one word, lowercase, dot com. Okay. MI for Michigan. MI Got for it. Michigan. Okay. And, uh, um, uh, where where can people see the airplane next when you've got your approval? When, when are you targeting uh, getting having uh, having your first air show as an SLSA? Uh, we're shooting for Sun and Fun 2022. Okay, so there you go, folks. So, uh, Good reason to go to Florida in 2022 to see the final version yes. of the SLSA of the Hyperlight. Great. Correct. And I've covered this airplane and lots of others. You can find all that and plenty of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining, joining Ron Jones and myself here at the first day of EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2021.